have been the most exactly uncannily exact. And I believe, I believe they have a clip, with just a short clip of that. If it's clip number three, I think, but it's of the last growing manifestations, if they have that. The collapse reaches its peak at the end of September 2008, with what becomes the greatest single-day crash in Wall Street history. That morning, in the New York Stock Exchange, the opening bell refuses to sound. Even Wall Street takes it as an omen. The stock market crashes over 700 points. On what date did the greatest crash in Wall Street history take place? It is September 29, 2008. But the ancient biblical calendar holds a different name. The greatest stock market collapse in world history takes place on the 29th day of Elul, the exact day appointed from ancient times for the nullifying of the financial realm, the wiping out of financial accounts. Elul 29, the day of the Shemitah, the sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life. The judgment that specifically strikes the nation's economic and financial realm. The two greatest collapses in stock market history up to those dates, each took place on the same exact day on the ancient biblical calendar. And they just happened to each take place on the precise biblical day that's specifically ordained to touch the nation's financial realm and to wipe clean its financial accounts from ancient times, the day of financial nullifying. And it's not only Elul 29, but it can only be one Elul 29 in seven years that can constitute the day of the Shemitah, the day of nullification. So on which Elul 29 did the greatest stock market collapse take place in the year 2008? It happened on the once in seven years Elul 29, the exact one that constitutes the day of the Shemitah and the greatest crash of 2001. When did it take place? It happened on the once in seven years of Luke 29 that also constituted the Bible's day of the Shemitah. So when all across the world, observant Jews are symbolically canceling out their debts to each other, the greatest wiping out of financial accounts in history is taking place on Wall Street and sweeping across the globe. According to the ancient mystery, the financial nullification has to take place seven years apart from the one before or after. So the two greatest financial nullifications in Wall Street history up to their dates take place seven years apart. Not only on Elul 29, but seven years apart, seven exact biblical years apart, down to the exact season, the exact month, the exact date, the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second, the exact closing bell. No human hand in the world could have orchestrated such a thing. It required the working together of every financial transaction and interaction in the world. It even required that 9-11 had to have happened exactly when it did, as it was 9-11 that caused Wall Street to collapse in 2001 on the exact ancient appointed day. Powerful. Powerful stuff. Yeah, that's from the that's from the mystery of the Semita unlock. unlock. That's from the DVD. Yeah, and so the, the last two are that. Now we're coming up to the next one. Now the next one's coming up. It's close. Now I want Now I have to do my normal thing. Yes. And just so everybody, no, we're not saying God has to do it on the date. God has, does not have to do anything. I can come back, and it was a very nice day, and everything was was all that. But it could, and I believe we should be ready. But either way, if it happens then or later, I believe. If Strongly, a very great shaking is coming to this nation that will involve the financial realm, economic realm, and more than that, and more than that, even to changing courses of history. So it could begin here or whatever, but we need to be ready. So now when's it going to happen? It's going to happen, Elul 29 falls on September 13th. September 13th is Sunday. There's no market open. But the last day that the market is open, that will be frozen at this date, will be the date of 9-11 will be the 14th anniversary, two Shemitahs from the day of 9-11. September 11th. That's Friday. Friday, just before, Coming up. before you go into a little 29, will be frozen at 9-11's number, you know, which actually happened on 9-11. 9-11 happened, the markets 
stopped, was frozen at 9-11, the 9-11's number, that went right into the, the Alul 29 opening next week, and it crashed from 9-11. Actually, I'm throwing this in. This is just extra. But, <laughs> but the, the, the number that was frozen for a week from 9-11 was the number, the stock market was at 9605. That's 9, and 6 plus 5 is 11. It, was, it came out to 9-11. <laughs> that, was, that was the number, frozen. So it's going to be again 9-11. Now, what's going to happen on that day? Well, one thing we know is going to happen. On the day of wipeout of Lul 29, the sun will be darkened again. It will be the eclipse of the sun happening oh. on the day of wipeout, on the day of nullification, on that time. Now, I want to share something. This is that David Wilkerson now. Now, listen. Listen okay. to what he said. Okay. This, was, this was, I mean, in the vision, he talks about an economic collapse. But this is something he, I think, came out in the 90s, though. But listen to this. So, very, he said, soon a European or North African or Eastern nation is going to default in its international loan. Now, I'm not, now I, we don't know this is the case, but in the news, you've got Greece going on there with this. I'm not saying it's the case. People then, are pulling their money out yeah, of the banks of Greece. in Greece yeah. as yeah. we speak. Yes, that's right. I mean, they may even get a deal, but we don't know. And then, then what happens, with, he says, then what happens within two weeks, well, he's, he's, he said Mexico will default. About two weeks after the first country goes bankrupt, when, which money is owed to European banks, German, which is part of this whole thing, yeah. Swiss and French banks, but a second country is going to go down, probably Argentina or Brazil. Two weeks after the first country goes down, Mexico will, will default. When the banks open the next day at 9 in the morning, $15 billion an hour is going to be withdrawn from our American banks. They're going to be running our banks. The Arabs, all the Latin American countries, they're going to be running our banks. Before the day is over, the USA is going to have to declare a bank holiday. From the time the first country goes down, you'll have two weeks to get your money out of the bank. Now I'm going to give you a word of advice. When the first country goes bankrupt, you get every dime you have. Church, get your money out of the bank because there's going to be a bank holiday and you won't be able to get a dime for six months. Now, of course, there's going to be a, rest there's going to be a restoration, but the nation will never be as it was again. Now, I'm, this is, I'm not saying it has to be. Well, that's David, Dave speaking. David Wilkerson, but it's just very interesting. Mm -hmm. He's talking about defaults and things like that. I want to just touch on two things, and one is the Super Shemitah, or the Juba, prophetic Jubilee. Now, I don't know if you have time to do yes, it. Yes, we to, have to, time. You'll do it? Okay, it won't be Your that Your time is my um, time. Okay. All right. We have, I believe, clip number two, which is the mystery of the seventh Shemitah. Let's just talk, because this is also, this cycle is starting shortly. It's the first time in 2,000 years that the land is being restored to the Jewish people. The year following the Shemitah was September 1917 to September 1918. The Balfour Declaration takes place in November 1917. Thus, the land is restored to the Jewish people in the year following the Shemitah corresponding to the Jubilee. It's a prophetic Jubilee. And according to the mystery, the Jewish people now would return home to the land they had lost, to their father's possession, to their ancestral homeland. Everyone shall return to their possession. The mystery of the Jubilee concerns the seventh Shemitah. So what happens if we move forward in time from the Shemitah of 1917, 49 years to come to the seventh Shemitah? What is the seventh Shemitah? It brings us to the Shemitah of September 1965 to September 1966. The year following the Shemitah would begin September 1966 and end September 1967. Did anything significant take place within that year and within those dates? Any event of restoration? The answer is is yes according to bible prophecy the jewish people have to be restored not only to their homeland but also to their ancient holy city of jerusalem in the midst of the six-day war israeli soldiers enter the lion's gate of the biblical city of jerusalem through gunfire they make their way to the holiest site in judaism the western wall there they weep and after 2,000 years, the Jewish people are restored to their ancient capital, Jerusalem. It happens on June 7, 1967, within the parameters of the year ending in September 1967, the year following the seventh Shemitah. 
the Jubilee. The seventh Shemitah had ushered in the second restoration of the land. According to the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, the Jewish people had returned to what they lost 2,000 years before, Jerusalem. They had regained their long lost possession and returned to their ancestral home. The two great restorations of the land each happen according to the mystery. The Bible ordains that in the year of the Jubilee, the shofar, the ram's horn, is to be sounded. The first thing that happens after the soldiers reached the Temple Mount in 1967 is that the ram's horn is sounded from the Temple Mount, the sound of the Jubilee. The man who sounds it is Rabbi Shlomo Goren. Rabbi Goren was born in the year 1917, the time of the other restoration. When he sounds the shofar, he is 50 years old, the number of the Jubilee. The mystery of the Shemitah lies behind the two great end-time restorations of Israel's lands. Now the pattern and cycle does not have to continue, but if it did, what would be the seventh Shemitah from the last restoration? The seventh Shemitah begins September 2014, goes to September 2015. The year following the seventh Shemitah is that of September 2015 to September 2016. While the cycle doesn't have to continue and nothing significant has to take place, in the last two occurrences, it has meant war in the Middle East, war in the land of Israel, and a war resulting in a prophetic restoration. Wow. I show this for this reason, that it's not only the climax of the Shemitah, it's also the beginning of what you could call the super Shemitah, or the prophetic Jubilee. Now, again, we don't put God in a box. He doesn't have to do anything, but what it has meant is war. What it has meant is a change in Israel. This is massive. When you take these two things, 1917 was the land. 1967 was Jerusalem. Now what's next? So if this, we have to be ready in either way. So we got all, talk about convergences. We've got all, everything we just said, everything, change, and we have a potential change in world history, even prophecy. It doesn't have to, but I would be ready. Wow. So that, that is from the, the mystery of the Shemitah unlocked. Let me just share one more quick point. And that is that, and this is from, on the, in the teachings, it's the days of the watchmen. We are called in this day to be watchmen. Yes. We have, must be the watchmen. And just some keys to be, I give the keys about how to be a watchman. But the key is this, no matter who you are, man, woman, child, doesn't matter. We are called to be watchmen, we must stay on the walls. In other words, we must stay on the ramparts. In other words, we cannot get so wrapped up in the world, we cannot get wrapped up in all the details if we're going to hear from God. The watchmen have to look, they have to stay above the city. We have to stay above what's happening. We have to be in God's presence in order to, to be the watchman we're supposed to be. We have to be on the watchtower. We have to stay in the presence of God or we cannot be watchmen. And we have to be looking, the watchmen look into the distance. They don't, they don't look at everything around, they look into the distance. They look into what's coming. They are ready to what, they are looking that way. The watchmen, they are acting at night. Things get dark, that's their hour. That's their hour. We can't fear the, the darkness because God called us for the darkness. God called us to be strong. We, the watchmen, once they see something, they have to sound that shofar. We have to not be silent. We must sound the alarm. The fir, one of the first times I came here, I went to Branson Airport, and I'm leaving, and I'm thinking, Lord, you know, this is a heavy message. You know, why do you have me doing this? And I open up the Bible. It's, he bombards me, son of man. When, I, when danger is coming, if the watchman does not sound the alarm, I will hold him accountable. I've, I've called you to do this. You must, we are all watchmen. We must sound the alarm. God has called us to be faithful on the walls. And faithful, and that means we have to be in the presence of God. He will not only keep 